Welcome to Willow Valley Farms. We're gonna take you guys on a goat walk. I walk these goats twice a day. Chad Wagoner is a modern day goat herder. He starts and ends every day by walking these goats out to Let's pasture go. and then back again. Time for breakfast. Time for breakfast. They already know what time it is. They're like, let's go, Daddy. The goats he cares for are family to him. He knows each one, and many have names, like Blessing, Sophie, Sylvia, or Broken Horn. This little guy is just a couple days old. What are you doing? Welcome to planet Earth. Let's go. Good job. Chad will tell you each goat is unique with its own personality. But as a breed, they're also unique. These are San Clemente <laughs> Island goats. There's estimated to be fewer than 1,500 of them in the world. And the single largest herd, 250 of them, are here on this farm in rural Gretna, Nebraska. I take it for granted sometimes, but then I also sit back and, and I, I think, wow. Wow, look at these goats. The goats get their name because about a century and a half ago, there were believed to be as many as 18,000 of them living on the small San Clemente Island off the coast of California. When they started to overrun the island's natural ecosystem, an eradication program was started until only a small breeding population returned to the mainland. So how does this breed of goats get from a small island in the Pacific Ocean more than 1,000 miles away to a 40-acre farm in the Elkhorn River Valley in Nebraska. Chad and John Carroll are the reason. The couple started contacting breeders across the country to obtain the goats, slowly building their herd of one of the rarest goats in the world. Chad had been in pharmaceutical sales before turning his attention full-time to the goats. John has been a medic in the Air Force, a registered nurse, and is now an attorney in Omaha. And he quickly adds, a goat farmer. We started off with two, two goats, you know, it's like two goats and then we got to 20 and then, you know, now we're at like 250 plus. When I see Chad out there shepherding them Sophia. from a distance and they follow him everywhere. I mean, they're like one unit. It reminds me of like Italy or those European countries where shepherds took their flock or their herds and just walked around. Those walks allow the goats to stretch their legs, as Chad says often climbing up to munch on tree leaves along the way. It's exercise for the goats. And Chad says for him, it's a daily therapy session in the middle of a field. He calls it his happy hour. Let's go. I'm part goat. I, maybe that was my calling to do this. Um, I think it's because I spend a lot of time with the goats. Um, they know my voice. They know my smell, because I smell like them most days. I think the reason these goats are so comfortable with me are, is I spend a lot of time just doing this. I sit down with them in their environment. I want to be one of them and understand what it's like to be one of them. Just as much as I hope they want to be like me one day. There's a word Chad uses often when describing his relationship with the goats. But I use the word symbiotic, not only with the goats, but with all the living things, the trees the bees, the butterflies, the plants, especially these guys. Whether it's good for the soul, good for the health of these goats and the planet, or the soul and the health of us as humans, it's very symbiotic. It's not just about the good feelings they get, though. Chad and John are doing this to make a difference. They want to see the San Clemente Island breed of goats increase in numbers and flourish. They're looking for more serious breeders who want to share that mission. We recognize that now that we've got the numbers, you know, we need to find people who really don't want just two or three, you know, and just have, you know, eating weeds and things like that. We want them to really want to breed them. They believe another way to increase the number of these goats is to show they have value. John and Chad have a long-term plan they think will do just that. As with any critically endangered animal, we need to come up with a value add or purpose. Of course, they have a great set of genetics, but what we specifically want to do is create that value by building a dairy and showing non-San Clemente Island goat breeders and milkers that these guys can be milked and make a really good cheese. 
And that would be a value add, which would help for the sustainability of this goat and keep them from going extinct. It would be the first ever commercial milking goat dairy for San Clemente Island goats. There would be a storefront, a milking parlor, and a cheese room. For those that want to make a boutique niche cheese, um, the, the butterfat is very high, and I think it actually will make a really high quality cheese. The dairy would also serve as a real world classroom, and the subject matter would be San Clemente Island goats. The whole Maya Angelou, when you get give, when you learn, teach. So bring different groups and educate them, whether it's children, at risk children, LGBTQ youth, local elementary kids. Bring them in and let them see us cheese. Let them help us milk and do some of that in this area. We just got to figure out how to make it happen. And it takes money, you know, and, uh, and learning how to do it and all that. So we're just inching our way that way. John and Chad may be the best chance the San Clemente Island goats have to survive, which is exactly why they call this their passion project. We feel like if we can do this, we're going to find an outlet for these goats to save them. I think that if you ask almost any one of our family members, they think John and I are crazy. Why are you doing it? What are you doing that for? Why are you spending all that money on this? And I think that one day we'll prove them wrong. When I have that goat dairy up and you and I are sitting there eating goat cheese, maybe drinking a glass of wine, we'll toast to this interview and we'll toast to our family and say, told you so.